It's a game. In 2008, as we all know, capital got stopped in its tracks because of the crash. And I began to think about how capital affects different people's lives. And so Playtime is based really on all people that I know. All the characters are based on people that have a personal relationship to me. And to make a work that somehow look at this subject area of capital flows, of the way in which it affects people's lives, and the way that we're able to really try to think about these questions in a general sort of cultural sense. So we have Maggie Chong, who plays an interviewer, who interviews Simone de Paris, who's um, one of the most famous world art auctioneurs. I'm always phenomenally tense before every auction. We have a protagonist, James Franco, who plays an art dealer, who talks about the relationship between art and, if you like, speculation. More and more, the world of collectibles have taken on characteristics of broader financial markets. Then we have Mercedes Cabral, who plays a maid in Dubai, who's really trapped, actually, in her labor, in her space. And sometimes I feel, I feel very, very lonely, but... But I have to, I have to be strong. And then we have also um, some hedge fund managers who basically are sort of, in a way, really thinking about the kind of work that they do and explain to us what capital does and how it functions. I guess one thing the crash did was bring Marx back to life. I mean, there's a guy who knew something about capital. Well, I think one of the things in making this work was really thinking about how one would visualise and depict it. And so, of course, one of the things around capital is its very enigmatic presence. And some of that actually is in architecture, it's in buildings, it's in design. And so in the work, uh, I very much look at the way in which design and architecture functions as one of the marvels of late capital. And at the same time, has this slightly alienating effect. So we find characters in spaces where, in a way, they're kind of speculative spaces where they've been made, but there's not many people in them, they're empty, they're kind of, you know, have this phantom-like presence. And so in the work, it's generally a work that's really trying to look at capital in its different sort of disguises, whether it's data algorithms, which are sort of in these computer black boxes, or whether it's sort of in the mist, whether it's in the kind of mineral extraction, which is producing these sort of like fog, misty landscapes, or whether it's actually just in the linguistic pronunciation of an auctioneer like Simone de Paris. It is always, I say, a little bit like walking on a tightrope without a net. One of the things which, when I was making the work, hadn't quite developed, but somehow I think I was maybe hinting towards it, is this speculative quality of artworks. So you get some of it in discussions around sort of works when they're being auctioned with someone like Simone de Puri. But you also get it in the algorithmic aspect of, let's say, how images are made. So, for example, a lot of the images which are surrounding us in this gallery, they existed as files, but they're materialised into artworks and they become photographs. But, of course, now we have the advent of NFTs, where basically the artworks are just digital. You know, and they exist in their speculative manner between the people who buy it and collect them. So I think it's really interesting to think about all of these questions about the way in which, if you like, art gets produced and the role that digital culture has in its production today. It's a game! Earning healthy returns is very attractive. No regrets, solved.